I don't know how that. I just wanted to the picture because some people may not saw it. Uh, this one. Because a cancer cell can be easily uh, detected 
because you will be getting that salt and uh, staining what could be, say, for example, for a protein potential for my kindness, PK, say, for example, AKT. And, and, and from that, you can build from two, three, four, or even more if you, uh, if you, if you level them, you can uh, identify some target or main target in that same pathway on that specific cancer cell. Uh, so how it works is basically you stimulate the cells and fix them to preserve the phosphorescent state of the cell. And then uh, you allow, uh, so after you still have fixed them, you wash, of course, and then you permeabilize them, so you allow the antibody to go inside and live with them. Uh, stain it, and uh, we surface stain and the uh, intracellular to detect uh, protein phosphorylation, and you just analyze them by cytometry. And you can, s oh, I, I want the point. <laughs> I find myself in the second room, sorry. So as you can see, you can, it can detect protein phosphorylation in this cell membrane of the cell, nucleus cell membrane, in the cell membrane, uh, in the cytoplasm and in the surface of the nucleus. Oh, uh, it's, it's possible to be uh, found it if it's there uh, and it's be, target could be uh, analyzed. So it even tell you where this protein is uh, that's been activated is working, whether it's in the cytoplasm, whether it goes uh, inside the nucleus, or only act as a receptor level in the uh, uh, yeah cell surface. So if you compare it uh, with the conventional Western method in terms of time consumption and also. Um, you can see here and the steps say for example this uh, steps needed to uh, to do it for western is this is start one if you add one pico 10 pico 100 pico and compare it with the flow cytometer overlapping this is unstimulated with this one picogram and uh, 10 100 and uh, here are all negative for star six they are all negative five or it's uh, start six, as you can see. So it's 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and you analyze. It's very um, uh, simple, and in fact, not complicated uh, to be done following your uh, activation of your cells. Uh, the other, do we have? And using that technique, this is one of my results to check for a PDBK1 phosphorylation on monocyte. So I just uh, activated the peripheral blood molecular cell for the specific assigned time, fix it, permeabilize it in its state. And here is the result uh, uh, we shown. And uh, this is just an example for using uh, this uh, protocol. Uh, the technique for detecting intracellular proteins, it could say differentiate between induced and induced, induced cells, also between uh, treated or untreated cells, but there is other uh, numbers of, vari of variables you need to consider specific for phosphorylation. The culture condition, uh, you have to be careful when you are uh, doing your, uh, your culture, say you are working with cell lines. Uh, there is a specific cell number uh, range. You don't want the cells to be too crowded. You may have intercommunication between the cells may change the uh, protein, uh, the phosphorylation state of the cells. That uh, when you detect it's not actually because of your treatment, but it's because of the uh, cells are too crowded. Also, your cellular manipulation it has. In cell manipulation, it has to be, uh, in terms of cell it has to be the same for treated and treated. Also, uh, in terms of pipetting, uh, specificity of your, uh, the protein you are going to be de detected. Most of them, they design them if you are detecting protein for sort is direct staining. So right away to the epitome. Uh, also, cell fixation and cell permeabilization. 
and there is difference uh, that if you are going to mark surface protein with intracellular, some surface protein might not be uh, able to be detected when you fix with specific fixes in plasma. So before you do your experiment, you have to check first that uh, this surface protein will not be affected. And usually for the compound, they have three kinds, different, harsh and simple and perform multi-high. So you can choose which one is compatible or the other thing you ha you can do is first, after you are fixing, stain the surface, uh, uh, staining first, surface staining molecule first. Uh, then go wash, permobilize, and do the intracellular. Uh, also, like uh, my uh, may, may work. And uh, the other important thing I have one of student uh, last year. Uh, he, he done his stain on, on surface stain, he did not read the uh, TDS correct. And uh, I said I was doing this for nearly two months and I can't see anything, I should see the receptor. I told him, okay, give me what is it when I check it out. I find out the company actually was staining, uh, the staining part of the epitope was uh, tapped to the C terminal of the receptor. So that means if he did not, uh, done the permeabilization, he won't be, uh, the stem cell won't be able to get inside the cell to bind with the receptor and be detected. So again, uh, it's very important to check all of the data you have to get uh, all of the results you need. Um, also things you need to, uh, you don't want to mess with the adhesion cells a lot. <laughs> So uh, you have better if you fix them first and gently scrub them before permeabilization. Like that, you will preserve most of the cells uh, to be intact in the posterior <coughs> status of the, of the cells. Uh, live cell discrimination is also important because most of the dead cells tend to uh, give you more false positive results. They uh, bind with the protein. And then uh, you say, oh, I got phosphorylated one, but it's not, it's actually dead cells, most of it. So it's better before you do your experiment to check cell viability, say for example, tripound blue by the microscope, or if, uh, if or you can use a PI for PDM and you did uh, uh, to check the percentage of uh, the viable cells. So it has to be, most of it at least 95 percent is viable cells before you experiment. So, uh, also, you need to consider uh, the inhibition of yeah. intracellular phosphatase activity. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's important because also it may, you may have the reaction happen, but because of these guys there, you will lose your phosphorylation. In that case, you will have more like false negative some false positive. Also, if you are dealing with a sample from a patient, uh, uh, it's better if you fix the blood or, uh, or the sample uh, less in time, less than 30 minutes, the maximum. Other, the, other than that, most of the phosphatase or proteins might interact with the other cells in the blood and you also, you, uh, your result won't be reliable. Um, so for protocol design, it depends whether are you uh, sorry, whether you are uh, detecting only just the protein phosphorylation or phosphoprotein and surface marker, or even you have another chance to check whether protein is phosphorylated and other indicator of cellular function like apoptosis or cytokine release on that specific cell, like was just the doctor yesterday they mentioned a lot could be going in the cell. So if I have one cell, surface stain, I can check for AKT being phosphorylated, and I can check for the phosphorylation of bad, uh, phosphorylation of bad as a consequences of AKT phosphorylation at the same time, and also if it's uh, one of the uh, um, immune cell, you can check if it's uh, release any of these cytokines as well by label. 
So the only way you need to know what choices you will need to do in terms of what buffer you will use and fixed unpermeabilization buffer to have the result of the three all together at the same time the same experiment, in this experiment. Uh, so, standing for multiple kinase simultaneously will give you opportunity to study signaling cascade because you are going in one cell and as I just said, you went to AKT, you went to bad down cell or maybe not bad, maybe nf -Kb b by activating nf -Kb, you can also lay with and check uh, this though, or maybe not even those. I did the experiment before checking whether it can maybe induce survival by activating bad one or caspase line. So it turned out to be it was uh, mainly caspase line, but not bad one. Uh, so, but not bad uh, protein. So, you like that, you'll have an idea when inducing the cells how exactly uh, the network of the signaling pathways that when it uh, was uh, going on traffic. Also, it can track cell signaling crosstalk uh, if there is a relation between two different uh, pathways or more. And uh, you can also have the ability to monitor activation state over time. I can induce my cells, say, for example, one hour, six hours uh, overnight, and I can preserve them and, uh, on, on minus, minus 20, and second day, I choose the phosphorylation. Uh, for each, for all of them, and I can compare the result what will happen uh, over time for these uh, cells from this uh, study. Also, it can give you the bit of screen, uh, remind them for multiple targets simultaneously, for example, <laughs> detection of kinase activity intracellularly, or uh, you can, especially on, on drug businesses, if I give this medication, it will activate what signaling pathway. So you can uh, not only just check it once and you can redo it and also inhibit the pathway to confirm that this is coming from your treatment to those cells, not from just some anything else. So it's also uh, possible because it's reproducible too. Uh, and this is an example. This is an example of AKT pathway. Here is AKT being phosphorylated. For example, this is here activating caspase line or activated bad, this one, and it will lead to cell survival, the outcome of the signaling pathway. Or maybe crosstalk, as I just mentioned, say crosstalking with an FKB uh, pathway or crosstalking with the caspase cas cascade. Like that, if I have an, uh, an inducer of apoptosis and, and, and AKT, say for example, that inducer could also activate AKT phosphorylation for two positions, uh, and that one uh, phosphorylate caspase line, it could stop the apoptosis and allow the cell to survive. So it, you can connect even different uh, mechanism or uh, going in the cell or, or at the same time. Uh, also, you, for example, here it shows um, uh, Eric pathway and malkinase through RAP, crosstalk, uh, and others. So different metabolism. So it's, it's a big network you can, uh, you can actually uh, thrive on it. And your favorite uh, who that and the doctor P53. <laughs> so, uh, to test for specificity, how would you <coughs> confirm? Well, I got my protein phosphorylation. Like, you gotta prove it. So, first thing you need to do is to inhibit the phosphorylation of the protein of interest by an inhibitor for that specific signaling pathway. And check if you have reduction in the phosphorylation status of that. Uh, so that means it's, uh, it's your target, it's, it's, it's okay. And the percentage of inhibition also could be that significant. But if you don't, some companies you say, I search and I didn't find an inhibitor for that specific protein. Well, you can use all of the, sorry, you can use all of the other, uh, all of the other cells are going to compete with the phosphoantibody with phosphopeptide, or you can buy a chemical like an solution, 
or for example the uh, phosphatase treatment okay after activation so you react uh, you deactivate the phosphorylated protein or generate a kinase deficient whether solvan or mice for, for example for tyrosine side like side directed molecules is kinase expressing cells and on knockout cells also you can compare it with say a wild type so you know not not knockout cells won't be expressing that all right five second we'll go five second one okay also, so specific consideration need to be taken when dealing with cell lines that it's necessary to start them for a period of physical stimuli for protein latency ready from 6 to 12 hours but no more than that so you may activate any stress responses for sporulation and uh, it's going to be in a mess so also uh, you shall, as I mentioned before cell density has to be in the range between 1 to 5 Time 10 to 5 cells per ml is recommended because high density might change the signaling properties of most of the cells. And here is the references I use. Graduating from uh, Khartoum University, uh, Microbiology and Faculty of Medicine, did my master. McGill University, uh, Microbiology and Faculty of Medicine, Montreal, Quebec. I work as teacher assistant. Uh, before following my BSCC at Khartoum University. Also, <coughs> I work at McGill University uh, in uh, nanotechnology product. Work, did my master on Biotechnology Research Institute, National Research Council of Canada, working on bacteria degradation process rate. I also work on Indium technology uh, for development of monoclonal antibody for gene therapy. Uh, also done some training with Royal Victoria Hospital in Montreal, work with cell line, reporter genes, and endocrinase assay, uh, and currently cytometry specialist with Jawhar Center and uh, AGU. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You make cell uh, installation to arrest the cells in G1 fibula. Okay, so they don't work. So when I stimulate, I know whatever happens next is according to what is stimulate I give it. Okay. So you make an arrest by the serum installation in all cells. Go to the G1 phase, okay. and after you give serum again, yes. you make a stimulation. Yes. But you have for all cells with the same conditions. Yes, of course. Stimulated and unstimulated. And they started it to be recovered after your uh, removal starvation. Exactly. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, G, as you mentioned yesterday, G1 phase is a place for a lot of things. Also, the differentiated cells I spoke to you about, I told you cell differentiation. Also, they were like cell cycling, a lot of S phases and G2. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, all of the cells differentiated are in the G1. No other phase. Yeah. And I can see it. It's so, so incredible. Yeah, it, it, yes. Exact conditions for all cells. Thank you very much. Thank you for this. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, yeah, who is having good? Excellent. Oh, exactly. Well, so I'll let you know that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that I'm
Still recording. Recording? Not recording. Yeah, recording. They should then stop. <laughs> 